go ahead and prepare ourselves to just praise and worship God in this moment. Although he should be praised and worshiped forever and always, in every moment. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for being God. We thank you for being what we need you to be in the moment. Father, we just pray over today's service, Father. We pray that everybody has a word received to them personally. Personally, Father, we thank you, Father, that you are great in our lives. We thank you that we do not need for nothing. We thank you, Father, that even if there is a need, you know what we need to supply it. We thank you, Father, that you are the great I am. We thank you that we get to call you. Today, we exalt your name, Jesus. We exalt your name and free ourselves, dear God, because it is you that give us freedom. We let go of the anger that we have toward people. We let go of grudges. Today is just a releasing type day. So whatever you are feeling, whether it's anxious, annoyed, or what have you, Father, we just want to release it to you so we can have a renewed spirit, a renewed spirit inside of you, Father. We pray as the door is open to the public that they receive your grace, your love, and your mercy. And for those that are online that is stretched out far and wide, they receive your presence and your love, dear God. We thank you that you are able to reach different people at the same time. You are omnipresent. You do all things great, Father. And we want to exalt you for that alone, Father. You are magnificent. Father, we just thank you in this moment. We thank you for being Elohim. Father, for being our Jaira. Father, for being our Abba. God, you are everything to us. And we thank you for seeing us fit to be used for your glory. Father, we just give you honor, praise, and so much more. We give you honor, 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 and honor. We thank you that we do not need for nothing because you supply all of it. God, today we ask for increase in marriages. We ask for increase in households. We thank you, Father, and we ask you for increase in our jobs. We thank you, Father. We ask you for increase in ministries, not just our own, Father, but all across the world that are reaching your people for the gospel, for your name to be heard and not ours. We thank you, Father, that our agenda will be set straight where it only gives you glory and raises you up higher and higher, Father. Because as you go higher, we are allowed to go up there with you. Father, we just want to thank you and give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father God, we love you again. We love you, we love you, we love you. Wherever you are right now, whether we be in the building with us tonight, or those of you that are viewing, wherever you are online, just take a moment and just give God praise. Just take a moment where you are and just give God praise. One, because you're alive. Two, because he's, he's been protecting you this entire week. Three, just because he's God. Just give him thanks where you are right now. Just give him thanks. Just give him thanks. Just praise him. Just worship him. Worship him in this moment right now. Father, we love you, Lord God. We worship you, Father. Lord God, we love you. We love you. We love you. Hallelujah. 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 Your name be exalted. Your name, your name be exalted, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Father God. We adore you. We adore you. We adore you in this place. We adore you, Father God. We love you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for loving us, Lord Jesus. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us, Father. Thank you for wrapping your arms around us in this moment, in this space, in this atmosphere, in this month, this decade, this year, Father God, this day. Thank you, Father, this hour. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us, Father. And we will give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise, Father. And we love you. We love you. We love you. In Jesus' name, Jesus, we thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Just wanted to take a moment during the prayer 
after the prayer that we just took a moment to go to God for ourselves. Amen. I just want you to go to God for yourself in this moment. Hallelujah. And Lord God, we love you. We praise you. We praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Welcome, everyone. Welcome, everyone. This is the Excelling Church, Georgia campus, where your life gets better from here. You just heard one of your lead pastors, Pastor Jerrica Peacock, as she led us in prayer this, this evening. And I'm your other lead pastor, Pastor Desmond Peacock Sr., a.k.a. Pastor Des. And we are excited, one, because we're back, y'all. We are back, and we are so happy to be back. We want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts that you all, you all gave us the opportunity to go and travel and just enjoy each other, go on a, a, a slight vacation so that my wife and I and our families can be poured into. Amen. We had an amazing time. Thank you so much for your prayers and thank you for your support. And I got to give a special shout out to our excelling global team for coming through for us in, in service. We thank y'all so much. Shout out to our senior pastor, Apostle Elect Jarrell K. Solomon and his lovely wife, Jasmine Solomon, and the excelling main campus out of New York. Thank you so much for your support this past weekend. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And another special shout out to our excelling GA partners, y'all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for just for just supporting us in this moment. And thank you because, like I said, our love tank is flowing over. It's, it's what do it's, what, what they call it again, Pastor Jerk? It's like pouring over? It, it's, 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 yeah, our, our love tank is pouring over. Overflowing, that's what it is. <laughs> thank you, overflowing. And so we're excited. And we, we, we missed y'all. And we are so glad to be back. We're so glad to be back. Amen. So before I jump into it, I have a couple of announcements. Just a couple. Uh, our first announcement is I want to remind all of our partners, all of our partners, online campus partners, you are included in this as well. Our 3090 initiative is still going, y'all. Our 3090 initiative, what that means is we've been praying and we have been believing in God that we will gain 30 brand new partners within the next 90 days. And y'all, we are gaining partners, amen? But the awesome part about that is people are getting saved. People are getting saved. They're, they're, they're dedicating their lives to God. We have some rededications That's, that has happened over the past 30, 40 days. And we are excited at what God is doing. But we want to keep this momentum going, y'all. We want to keep this momentum going. So if you invited a lot of people, continue to invite. Continue to invite. Continue to, to just, 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 just step out on faith and do something that you're not comfortable doing for a lot of us, which is going out and speaking to others. But just invite them here to the Excelling Church Georgia campus so they can experience the love of God that you've been experiencing. Amen? So that's how 3090 Initiative is still going, it's still going. Next thing, next thing on the, floor, on the, on the announcements is we have Children's Church is coming up, y'all. Our first initial... Our first official children's service is happening. It's happening on June 26th, I believe. Yes, June 26th. June 26th is our first official children's service. So what's going to happen is we're going to have praise and worship together as a family right here at the main campus. Amen. And then from after praise and worship and, uh, and announcements have been given, the children are going to go ahead to our children's campus amen and they're going to have children's church over there while the adults have service in the main campus amen but that's going to take place june 26 at 4 p.m so please 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 come on bring your children families you are welcome to join and attend we got something special for, for children. We got a good word for our kids, and we're just excited. We're just excited to see what God is going to do on the 26th of June. Amen? Um, and, and I have another announcement, which I really want to, I, I want the invites to start, to start flowing in. You know why? Because this Sunday is a special Sunday. It is a special, special Sunday. It's Father's Day. It's Father's Day this Sunday, y'all, and we are having a special Father's Day service, a special Father's Day service. So you already know what we did for mothers on Mother's Day. Now it's, it's time to celebrate our fathers. Amen. So we're going to have a, a, an amazing word. Our theme for our Father's Day service is take your rightful place. 
take your rightful place. So men, 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 whether you are a father, stepfather, a father figure, a man who is aspiring to be a father, or you're a man, period, I dare you to come here at 4 p.m. this Sunday afternoon. Come meet us here, 5201 Morris Avenue in the heart of Columbus, Georgia. Come to the Excelling Church Georgia campus. We got an amazing word, and guess what? We got raffles and prizes too, so we want to celebrate you. We here at the Excelling Church want to celebrate you. So men, 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 come on, and you are more than welcome to come and enjoy service with us. Amen? So that's our Father's Day service that is happening this Sunday at 4 p.m. Doors open up at 3.30. So make sure you come in at early so you can grab a seat because I guarantee I, I can, I'm going to be praying to God that this place gets filled and gets filled with men. Amen? So women, that doesn't mean you're not invited either <laughs> because just like we have for Mother's Day service, men, you are invited. Women, you are invited as well. Amen? So come on out for our Father's Day service on Sunday. Now, I have a special announcement. I have a special announcement also. Uh, I, want, I want to say it was probably about a week and a half ago, uh, we had uh, our partners uh, here at the Excelling Church, Georgia campus, two of our partners uh, had a tragic loss. They lost their mom, um, Sister Angela and Andre Clark lost their mom, amen. And so what we've been doing is we've been praying for their strength. We've been praying for their, for their, for that God will cover them and God will remind them who he is and to help them during this tragic time of mourning. Um, but also we, they, they, they were looking for assistance, amen, and helping to lay their mom to rest. And so they had a GoFundMe account that, that I believe they created uh, in, the, in the past week and a half. And so as they want to let the Excelling Church Georgia campus know that guess what, not only did they reach their goal, but they reached their goal in time enough, y'all, amen? They reached their goal, so we want to thank God that they want to thank us for sowing into their, uh, uh, helping them out in that moment, assisting, but at the same token, we want to thank God for all of those who sold and assisted in this time frame to help the Clark family, amen? So what I want us to do, I want us to continue Continue to pray for the Clark family as they go through this time of bereavement, as they lay their mom to rest. Amen. Pray that God strengthens them and pray that God continues to encourage their heart um, as they go through. Amen. So, Sister Angela, Brother Andre, we love y'all here at the Excelling Church, Georgia campus. Your family is praying for y'all and we just love y'all. Amen. So, y'all continue to do what you got to do and we'll be praying for your strength during this trying time. Uh, last but not least, this wasn't actually on the list, but as we're talking about loss, uh, we had a loss that happened in our family. Uh, my spiritual dad, Pastor Terrence Nolan of the Bridge Church of Alabama, uh, his brother, Troy Nolan, transitioned as well uh, over the past week to be with the Lord. And so what I would like for you all to do is to help pray for my spiritual dad, Pastor Terrence Nolan, and the Bridge Church of Alabama family, the Nolan family, pray that God will also continue to strengthen his heart and, and give him the encouragement and, and have him be strong for his family during this time. So we love you, Pastor T, here at the Excelling Church Georgia campus, and we're praying that God continues to cover you, your wife, and the Nolan family, your family, and that God will still be there for you during this time. We love you, Dad. We love you so much. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So, those were our announcements. Oh, last but not least, I'm going to tell you, every single time I get up here, I'm going to announce, we have our website on and operating, y'all. Our website, theexcellingchurchgeorgiacampus.com. It is in full operation. So, when you have a chance, go online, surf it out, look at it, amen. Uh, do what you need. Everything that we do here, Live, we want to make sure that we that we actually put it there on the actual website so that way there's no way you miss the word of God. There's no way you miss what we're doing here. Now, there may be certain things that we don't add, 
Uh, and you, that just means, you know, some things like that happen. But we want to ensure that Sunday services, our midweeks, amen, our 6 a.m. or 12 a.m. prayer pursuits, wherever it may be, that we make sure that we also post it, amen, for those of us that may not be able to make it to service, but you can actually go online, okay? And then we have everything else that you may need. Let's just say you want to partner up with us. You can do that on the website. If you want to sow into the ministry, you can also also do that on the website so that way you don't have to have to worry about being out of town and saying oh my gosh I have to tithe you don't have to worry about it you can do it right where you are wherever you may be amen all right so that's our website the excelling church Georgia campus dot com amen amen so without further ado y'all we're gonna jump right into it y'all ready for midweek are y'all ready? Yes, let's jump right into it without further ado. So we have been talking for the entire month of June. Our topic for our midweek encounter has been, it's time to cut it out. It's time to cut it out. Amen. And so we are on part three. We're on part three this, this afternoon, this evening. Uh, so what I want you all to do is go ahead and grab your Bibles. Grab your notepads, amen. Grab whatever you can. If you type, grab your laptops. If you if you type on your on your phone, grab your phone. Because in this in this part, we got some note taking. Amen. We're gonna be taking some notes. So I don't have much to say because I want you all to be writing some of the stuff that uh, we put down this this afternoon or this evening. Amen. So uh, I just want you to grab your notes. I want to give some shout outs. I want to give a shout out to uh, our sister Deidre Peacock, all the way from New Jersey, is tuning in. Sister, uh, uh, Mr. Jeremy, Jer Jermaine Miller is watching. How you doing, brother? Okay. Keandra Smith is watching. We just want to give a shout out to those that are watching. Mama Peacock is on. Thank you, Mommy. Thank you so much for joining in, Miss Gloria Peacock. Amen, amen, amen. So, uh, and I know there's more people. I can't see them on my phone right now, but charge it to my phone and not my heart. <laughs> amen. All right, so we're going to jump right into it. So if you got your Bibles, if you got everything that you need in front of you, I want you to turn with me. We're going back to the book of John. We're going back to the book of John, verse, I mean, chapter 15, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 8. And I'm going to read it in the New International Version, which is the NIV. But you all can feel free to read it in whatever version you have. Amen? And if you don't have a Bible, guess what? We're going to have it on the prompt in, this, in, this, in a minute. So, it reads, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Six says, if you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, when we left off last week, when we talked about, uh, when we was dealing with our midweek last week, when we left off, we, talked, we spoke about what it meant to abide in Christ. Um, and in this version, it talked about remaining in Christ. 
And so we, we dealt with, we, we, we pretty much broke open that word abide. We looked up the meanings of the word abide. And we looked up how abide also meant remain, dwell, live, all that great stuff. Amen. And so we also talked about in order to abide, there were certain things we must also do. Okay. So in order for us to live and abide and dwell in Christ, there were some things we must do. And so we looked at 1 John. 1 John points out that in order to abide, you must, one, love one another. Remember, we talked about that last week. You must love one another. And we had certain scriptures that you can look up. So uh, I'm going to give you one scripture out of each of these. So with love one another, we looked at 1 John 2 and 10, okay? 1 John 2 and 10. So when 1 John points out and to abide, you must, one, love one another. And you can look up 1 John 2 and 10. The second thing is we talked about we must walk as Jesus walked. We must walk as Jesus walked. And that was also in 1 John verse, uh, chapter 2, but verse 6, okay? 1 John chapter 2, but verse 6. We must walk as Jesus walked. The third one was we must be strong in the faith, strong in the faith. We can also find that as well in 1 John chapter 2, verse 14. You can find that also in 1 John chapter 2, verse 14. And then the fourth one was you must do the will of God. The fourth one was you must do the will of God. Which you can also find that in 1 John chapter 2, verse 17. Now, there are, there are other chapters and verses in verse John that correlate with those four points. But I just wanted to give you uh, one scripture in each point so that way you can, uh, you, can revert, you can revert back to it on your time afterwards, after tonight. Amen? So we talked about how, you, you know, in order to abide, there were some things you must do. And so we also dealt with how... In verse 4, in verse 4 of the text that we talked about, uh, we talked about how the fruit that is being produced is never going to be automatic. You cannot produce the fruit or be, you, can't, you cannot produce the fruit on your own effort either. So the fruit that is being produced is because of you being connected to the vine, okay, which is Jesus Christ. And God being the gardener, okay, which is God our Father. And in order for us to allow Jesus to abide in us, okay, and produce that fruit, we must trust him, right? We talked about trust. We must love others, okay, and love other Christians as well as love others as God loved us, amen? So we got to trust him that he's going to produce the fruit in us, and we also got to trust that as we allow the word of God to dwell in us richly, Jesus will follow through in his promise, and you will produce fruit, Amen? Amen. Amen. So here we are now with part three, and we continue on with part three when dealing with when a Christian, we left off and we asked the question, so what happens to a Christian who doesn't abide? What happens to a Christian who doesn't dwell in Christ? What happens to a Christian that doesn't go, that doesn't go by, uh, uh, I wouldn't say the rules and regulations, or doesn't go by the blueprint in where Jesus went by, or done, doesn't love, doesn't trust? you know, doesn't follow, what happens to that Christian, amen? So we're going to go ahead and we talked about aside from no longer producing any fruit, there are many consequences. There are many consequences for a man or woman of God who does not abide in Christ other than not producing fruit. So we're going to go in our focus scripture for tonight. We're going to actually start from 1 John chapter 15, verse 6. 1 John chapter 15, verse 6, and it reads, If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burn. So we will read this scripture, men and women of God, in this moment, Jesus was warning us or warning the disciples, okay? In this moment, Jesus was warning the disciples that failing to abide means that life fails as a whole. Failing to abide in Christ just meant meaning, or means that your life, 
your life as a whole will fail. So for example, a branch only has life, right? If it's connected to the stock of the vine. So that branch only has life if it's connected to the stock of the vine. So what that means with us or with the disciples in that moment that, were, that Christ was talking to, that Christ was, that Jesus was talking to, Jesus was speaking to, he was teaching, a disciple only spiritually lives as they are connected to the master. A disciple only spiritually lives as they are connected to the master. Now, we're talking about your life producing fruit spiritually. We're talking about your life living spiritually. Now, I'm not going to say that if you don't abide in Christ, then you're going to die physically. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying are, is there are consequences in the spiritual for us as men and women of God when it comes down to our life and how we live in Christ and how we move in Christ, how we move with this walk with God. So in that moment, Jesus was pretty much letting the, letting the disciples know that, hey, if you don't abide in me, if you don't abide in me in that very moment, your life spiritually is dead. This was a parable used to also humbly warn all of those who follow and abided in Christ. What would happen if we stopped? So we take what he's telling the disciples because guess what? Our job that Jesus, like Jesus gave the disciples before he descended into heaven, he said, go out and create other disciples. So our job as men and women of God, as we grow in our discipleship, we have to go out, share the gospel, and grow other disciples. So in knowing that, if we don't abide in Christ, our spiritual growth is dying. Our spiritual growth gets stunted. Pretty much it just stops. Amen? So that's, that, that's, that's, one, that's the way that, that Jesus, when he explained this thing to the disciples, that verse 6. Now check this out. What Jesus said is very, very important. I want, us to really, I want us to really think about what he said in this verse 6. And I'm going to read certain, certain versions in, uh, throughout this evening. You don't have to go to the version. You can just stay on this version that we're talking about right now. But he didn't say, now, now check this out. Jesus didn't say, if anyone does not bear fruit, he or she is cast out. Or it didn't say, um, if those that are not, those that don't bear fruit are thrown away and withered. He didn't say that. It's very, very important we read what Jesus said to the, to the disciples. He actually said, if you do not remain in me, if you do not remain in me, if anyone does not remain, in, if, if us as men and women of God do not remain in Christ, he or she is cast out, or he or she is thrown, or he or she are like branches thrown away. So it's very important that when we read the scripture, we read it in its entirety. Okay? Now, what that means is he knows who abides in him and who doesn't. Jesus knows this. Jesus knows who's abiding in him and who does not abide in him. And guess what? It's not always discerned by our outward estimation of fruit. Now, hold up, Pastor Des. What does that mean? What, 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 what are you talking about? What, say that one more time. I'm going to say it one more time. Okay, check this out. Jesus already knows in our day and age right now who we are. God already knows who's abiding in him and who's not abiding in him. And guess what? The result of who's abiding and who's not abiding isn't always estimated or isn't always a result of their outward fruit. Okay? Now, I know we've been talking about if we abide in God, we're going to get fruit. If we don't abide in God, then there's no chance of the fruit happening, right? Or there's no chance of the fruit producing. But check this out. When I began to do more study in this, I began to read and I understand, and it, it hit me like a ton of bricks too. It's like, wait a second. So you mean to tell me that if someone that's in the body of Christ and from my eyes, it looks like 
they got everything. Or in my eyes, it looks like they're getting blessed. In my eyes, it looks like, you know, they're, they're just, they're, they, they, they just got it. You mean to tell me that there's a possibility that that fruit isn't of God? Yeah, real quiet. Real quiet. Check this out. For example, what I may see as fruit is nowhere near what Christ sees as the fruit he produces. Okay? What I may see as fruit, what I may see as uh, 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 the result, or I may think that is it's the fruit. Hmm? Well, no, no. Yeah, well, I may see is good enough. Thanks, Pastor Jerrica. It may not. It may not be anywhere near what Christ sees because Christ is the one producing the fruit, right? But in my eyes, I'm looking at wow. Like, I'm seeing this person thrive. I'm seeing this person like it, it, it's. It's like everything that I that I believe is is success. Or is, is a promotion, is this, it's, it's, it's amazing. I feel that it's fruit from God, right? We may estimate or assume that Christ has blessed and produced fruit by the materialistic things we see a person has. So we may look at fruit in a way where, okay, fruit to me can be you got a brand new car. Fruit to me may be you got a brand new house. Fruit to me may be you got that promotion. Fruit to me may be you got new clothes. Fruit to me may be you have money in the account. That may be fruit to me. Or, you know, we can estimate that, man, your ministry is thriving. You always got people in service. You, you always got people joining. That, that can be fruit to me, right? That's what I see as fruit. But what if I told you, that even though you see those things, God can be nowhere to be found. What if I told you that if, 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 if this person was getting all of this stuff, or from your, from your purview, from your, from your vision, from your, from your vantage point, you're seeing this person getting materialistic things, and you're like, wow, this person's blessed. What if I told you that the stuff that they're getting has nothing to do with what God is producing because they're not even abiding in Christ? What if I told you that? Ah, what, 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 if, what if I told you that? What if I told you that what we're looking at as fruit is not what Christ looks, like, looks at as fruit? What if I told you that there are times that we look at fruit and we look at blessings as being something that is tangible, that we see? But what if I told you that there are certain blessings and fruit that Christ produces out of us that isn't tangible? What if I told you that? And this, this, this was like crazy. Fruit can be produced by one person receiving Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and growing in their spiritual walk with God. That can be fruit. What do you mean, Pastor Des? What do you mean? Let's say, say for example, right, you are, let's just say, for example, you're, you're in Subway. You're grabbing a sandwich, right? And let's just say in that moment, you just so happen to have a conversation with someone else that's grabbing their sandwich. And you decide to share the gospel of Jesus Christ to this person. Right? Y'all have a long conversation. Y'all sit down and start eating and talking about God. You're talking about God. And in that moment, that person that did not have a relationship with God, they decide at that moment that they want to dedicate their life to Christ. And in that moment in Subway, they dedicate their life to Christ. What if I told you that's the fruit that Christ wanted to produce out of you? The fact that you were able to share the gospel of Jesus Christ to someone else boldly and that person was compelled to want to know Christ and have a relationship with Christ because of how you present yourself as a disciple of Christ. What if I told you that was the type of fruit Christ is looking at? Or that's the type of fruit he wants to produce? As opposed to, let's just say, a church full of people. The church is packed. 
every, every, every time the church doors open, it's packed. There's always amazing stuff going on. But no one is getting fed the word of God or even understand what they're doing. Is that fruit? See, you see how we look at fruit in a certain way? Because if I look at a ministry that's thriving in Christ, right? I'm looking at this ministry, and this ministry is always packed full of people, right? It's they always, they, they, keep, they keep growing and growing and growing. But in my eyes, I'm seeing a big packed church. But in Christ's eyes, he's like, son, nobody's getting delivered there. Nobody's getting true deliverance there. They go, hear something, music is being played, they're shouting, and then they leave. And then they go back to their, they go back to their houses feeling the same way they felt when they walked in. That's not what I created the body of Christ. Uh, that's not what I created the, the hospital to be. I created the building to be a place where those that want to know me, that want to know me deeper, that are desiring deliverance, it's a place where they can learn how to be delivered and learn to grow deeper in me. But we see fruit from the materialistic vantage point. We see fruit as in, man, I see, I see this guy, he's getting a promotion on work, at work. He, he's, he's financially stable. You know, that, that's where I want to be. But what if I told you that individual that's financially stable in that very moment isn't even abiding in God. So that's not the fruit that Christ is producing. Christ has any, Christ doesn't even have a con, Christ doesn't even have a, 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 a direct connection with that individual. So let's be very, very careful as to what we feel a blessing is or what we feel fruit that's being produced is as opposed to what Christ sees as opposed to what Christ is when he produces the fruit out of us. I had to really think about that. I had to really kind of soak that in because in the beginning, that's what I thought. You know, the fruits of our labor would be what people see. The fruits of our labor would be what people hear. But what if I told you the fruits of your labor is what is, is the change in you? What if I told you that Christ was producing the fruit out of you was the change in your character, the change in how you see things, the change in how you view things, your faith walk is, being, is growing, your, 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 your life and relationship is getting deeper. So a lot of us, I want us to kind of get to the place where we see fruit as Christ sees fruit, not the way we have created fruit to look like. If that makes sense, we want, I want us to begin to start looking at how we, I want us to get to a place where we rely on God to produce out of us instead of us thinking that this is a direct production of Christ. And it may not even be. Now, I'm not saying you can't be blessed. I'm not saying that the fruit can't be the, the, the account being, being, being blown up and I'm not blown up the account being, uh, uh, field or you know or you getting the brand new house or you getting another car or you getting that promotion on your job or just the fact that you got you 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 got more or you received more than what you had but what i'm saying is i want us to start thinking about the fruit that god has already produced in us now like for example those of you that began watching us online as our online campus and then you decided to partner up with us online and you begin to watch us and, 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 and you begin to grow a deeper relationship with God because of just being a part of this ministry. That's fruit that God is producing in you. And then you go out and you share the gospel of Jesus Christ to someone else, something that you never did before or something that you always strayed away from doing in the past. That's the, that's the fruit that Christ is producing out of you. Just the change in what you, what you used to do as opposed to what you're doing now. Amen? So let's continue, because I'm almost done. So in that verse also it says, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned, and burned. 
Now, think about for, for me for a second. Let's, let's, let's go back in time and let's pretend as we are one of the disciples with Jesus Christ at this very moment when he's telling the disciples this. Think about how the disciples were feeling when Christ told them this. These words were coming from the same man that said he would never leave them. <laughs> that the Holy Ghost will be connected to them. He'll leave them an advocate. And, at that, and, 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 and now he's saying that if you don't abide, not only will you be disconnected, but thrown, cast, thrown away. Imagine how you would feel as a disciple. Imagine how you would feel in that moment, right? So I got a question. Have you ever heard of a disciple of Christ that lives a fruitless life? Have you ever heard someone that, that, that says, and, and what I mean by disciple is I, I mean someone that you know that is, that is out there, that is sharing the gospel, that is out there, that is, you saw, you saw a, you, you, you have seen a direct difference in the time where before they gave their life and or rededicated their life and now. Have you ever heard a disciple of Christ, a man or woman of God, that lives a fruitless life? Man or woman of God. But as men and women of God, aren't we supposed to be disciples? Right? So, have they ever, or have you ever, or let's put, let's, let's, let's make it a, a, a little bit more personal. You being a man and woman of God, you who feel as though you are a disciple of Christ, have you ever lived in a position to where you feel you have lived a fruitless life or a moment in time where your life was fruitless? You felt as though you walked around just wasting time. Hmm. You felt as though that there was, that there, there literally was no, I, w I wouldn't say there was no purpose in your life, because we don't want to go there. Everyone that lives and walks this earth, you have a purpose. You have a purpose. You have a plan. God has a plan for you. God has a purpose for you, and he has called you for a certain time and a set purpose. But I want to talk about those that have been in a place or in a position to where you're like, you know what? I just don't feel like there's fruit being produced. I just don't feel as though there's something different happening or something, something spectacular or something miraculous or, you know, I just don't. Have you ever been in that position? And if you have, if you have, my next question I want to ask you is how are you living? In that moment, how were you living? Were you abiding in Christ? Or were you living the way you wanted to live? Or some of us now, if you're in a position to where you feel as though you're just, you're just kind of stuck, ask yourself, am I really abiding in Christ? Or am I looking at fruit to be a certain way and not the way Christ sees fruit? So I want you to think about that tonight. I want you to think about that when we, when, 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 when we're, because when, I'm almost done. But when we, when, we, when we get off this live, I want you to take a moment and just meditate on that. And I want you to, I want you to kind of ask yourself. Man, have I ever lived a life that's fruitless? Because that was one of God's commands to us was to be fruitful and multiply. So am I, am I, am I not being fruitful? And then if I'm not being fruitful, what am I doing that's causing the fruit to not produce? Am I abiding in Christ like I'm supposed to? So I just want you to kind of Keep that close hold as we continue. So as we keep going, when Christ was talking about those that don't abide, that they're branches and they, and they wither or they burn, 
Those along with others who are not connected to the vine, guess what? They're going to perish. And it's not like, and it's not like as if they perish because they lack the knowledge. They know what they are to do. And that's the amazing thing about us being as a body of Christ. That's the amazing part about us having a Bible. That's the amazing part about us deepening our relationship with God. That's the amazing part about us coming into the church, coming into the building and learning, being taught, not only being preached, not only, not only receiving a preaching, but receiving a teaching. You know, you learn, you understand. So... It's not like they lack the knowledge. They know or they have an idea. They just don't do. Just don't abide. Their life is like a broken, dead branch. So just imagine, you've seen broken branches. We've seen them all the time, especially now. We just had in Columbus, Georgia, a huge, not huge, we had a really bad thunderstorm about it, well, last night and night before last. And driving into work the other day, it was just dead branches all on the highway, on the sides of the road. And it's so funny how we're talking about this, and God begins to show me these dead branches on the road. And all I could think about is some of these dead branches, y'all, had leaves on them. Some of these branches had leaves on them, but they were now detached from the vine. And that, so in that moment, as that branch is tossed on the sidewalk in the middle of the road. Whatever fruit that that branch produced is gone because it's no longer connected to the source that produces the fruit on that branch. So when I was driving down that road, all I can sit there and say to myself is, wow. The parable that Christ talked about with the disciples, lo, those many years ago, I'm beginning to see right now. Metaphorically, all these branches on the road, all these branches on the highway, withering away because they're disconnected to the branch. And in that moment, I keep hearing in the spirit right now, God is saying, son, there are so many of my people that are on the sides of the road. There are so many of my people that have been tossed in the middle of the road. There are so many of my people that are on the ground and their fruit is withering away because they have detached themselves from the source. Now, whatever you've done to detach yourself from the source, it is now time to cut it out. Whatever you're, whatever you're in the position of, whatever's going on right now, and you have detached yourself from the source, it's time to begin to cut that stuff out. Because what's going to end up happening is, just like those branches on the road, and some of us as we drive home tonight, you're going to see those branches, especially of young Columbus. You're going to see some of those branches on the road. With those, and they had nice little green leaves on them. And all I can think about is that was the fruit that once produced from that branch. But because now that branch is detached from the vine, those green leaves or that fruit that was, that was plentiful is going to die. And the fruit can be our gifts that God has given us. The anointing that God has given us. When we dedicated our lives to God, gave our lives to God, and we allowed God to be our Lord and Savior, in that moment, there were gifts that were beginning to blossom and grow inside of us because we were connected to the vine. Then something took place, and we detached ourselves from the connection. And gifts begin to wither. Anointing begins to wither. Your relationship in God begins to wither. And then we wonder why we're in a place where we don't see fruit. We wonder why we're in a place where we don't see the manifestation of God's word come to pass. Because we're not connected to the one who gives the word. We hear it. We come to church. We listen to it. We look on it. We look about it online. We tune in on live. But when the live goes off and the church doors close, what are we doing to keep ourselves connected to that vine? 
What are we doing? Because God is the going to be the one to give the increase. God is going to be the one. He is the vine dresser. If we're not connected to Jesus Christ, how do we expect to grow? How do we expect to get to a place to where we can honestly understand the fruit that Jesus is going to produce through us? And all I can think about, last but not least, and I'm done. All I can think about is looking at those branches on the road. And I was just saying to myself, look at the green leaves that was on these branches. And now those green leaves have nothing to live on. So those branches are just wasting time. Wasting time. We're wasting adequate time that we could be using in the gospel, in the spirit realm, because we're not connected to the one to give us power. And we're wasting our time. And in wasting time, we begin to die. Those branches get withered away. And then they use those branches and they burn them. Let's get reconnected to the vine. In this moment, let's get reconnected to the vine. Don't get to a place to where you feel as though you know you're not being fruitful. You know you're at a stuck place. And you know why you're at that stuck place. See, some, some, some may not know why they're stuck. But there's a vast majority of us in the body of Christ know why we're stuck and know where we faltered. But it's time to get reconnected. It's time that we know we've been, we've been disconnected from the vine. We know that we cut ourselves off from the source. And now it's time to re be reconnected to the vine. Because next week, we're going to talk about what happens when a Christian abides in Christ. We're going to talk about when the body of Christ, those of us, men and women of God, you and me, what happens when we actually abide in Christ. We talked about what happens when we're not abiding. We talked about what it means to abide. We talked about even some steps on how to abide. But now next week when we come back next Thursday, we're going to talk about what happens when a Christian abides in Christ. So in this moment, if you feel that you are disconnected from the vine and you want to reconnect yourself with the vine, you want to dedicate your life to Jesus tonight, or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus tonight, you can do that now. You can do that now, wherever you are. Or those of us in the building tonight, you can do that now. If you feel as though it's time for you to stop being disconnected, if you feel as though you know the life that you're living, there's no fruit that's being produced from the life that you're living, and you know why, it's time to be connected. And for those of us that want to build a relationship with God, you may not know Christ, but you want to know Him as your personal Savior and Lord, and you want to get connected to this vine so he can produce the fruit out of you that we've been talking about in this scripture in the past couple in the past few Thursdays, you can do that tonight. So if that's you, I just want you to take a moment right now and we're going to pray the prayer of salvation. I don't want you to waste any more time. Amen. So if that's you, what I want everybody those of us in the house, and those of us that are online. Go ahead and bow your head. Go ahead and bow your head. And those of us that want to dedicate our lives to Christ, we want to get saved tonight, or we want to rededicate our life, we want to get reconnected to this vine, or we want to connect to this vine, just close your eyes, bow your heads, and repeat these words after me. Say, Father God, you know my life, and you know how I lived it. Father, I pray that I repent of my sins and I ask you, Father, that you forgive me 
Wash me clean with the blood of the Lamb. Reconnect me or connect me with the vine, Jesus. I vow from this day forward to live for you. Thank you for welcoming me to the kingdom. You said in your word that if I confess with my mouth or believe in my heart that the Lord Jesus died on the cross but rose on the third day with all power in his hands, I am saved. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Listen, if that is you and you got saved tonight, you can do one or two things. You can put an emoji up in the comment section, say, hey, I got saved. Or you can email us at theexcellentchurchga at gmail.com. Let us know that you got saved tonight, and we will reach out to you by email or phone call. And we want to continue to discuss this walk with God, this amazing decision that you took and you made tonight. Amen. So right before we go, if there's anyone that would like to give, if there's anyone that would like to sow into the Excelling Church Georgia campus, this fertile ground, you can do that tonight. We have two ways online, and we have three ways in the building. We have our cash app, which is money sign, Excelling GA, amen. And we also have our Zelle account, which is the Excelling Church GA at gmail.com. And those of us in the building, if you want to give with straight cash, you can do that tonight as well. We have our offering envelopes in the back, and all you will do, all you need to do is fill it out, uh, put in whatever God leads you to put in, amen, and then talk, and then out, I'm saying toss, my God, just put it into the red bucket that is in the, on the same table, amen. So if that is you, go ahead and get your seed ready. I want to pray over your seed, and then we are almost out of here. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for tonight. I thank you, Father God, for each and every individual that has tuned in. I thank you, God, for each and every individual that has come in tonight. Father, I pray, Lord God, that the seed that they are sowing, Father, they are sowing the seed to be connected or reconnected to the vine that produces the fruit, Father God. And Father, I pray, Lord God, that you produce not only the fruit, but you produce a harvest that is so plentiful, Father, that they won't have room enough to receive. Meet the need where they are right now, Father. And Lord God, we touch and agree with whatever target they put their seed on, Lord God. We are touching and agreeing, Father, that it be in your will and you are providing the answer even now. And Father, I pray, Lord God, that every individual, Lord, as we dismiss, as they leave this place, but never ever from your presence, protect provide comfort and give encouragement and father i want to pray a special prayer for the clark family lord god be with them in this moment lord as you always have been give them strength and father we pray for their endurance during this time of bereavement and father we also pray for the nolan family we pray for the same strength and encouragement father and love and compassion during their time of bereavement father and we thank you for what you're doing in their lives even now. Cover, cover, cover. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And God's people say, amen. Amen. This is the Excellent Church Georgia campus where your life gets better from here. This is our midweek. Thank you so much for tuning in. Come back, meet us in the building this Sunday at 4 p.m. for our Father's Day service. You don't want to miss it. We love you all. Have a blessed evening. See you Sunday. Prophesy, y'all.